call with you. Welcome back to the recording. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, welcome to the first episode of So You Think You Got Problems. So You Think You Got Problems. Featuring Jeff White Eats, Kenny I got, Brooks, I got Timberick, I got Mike, and Mike Morator over there in the top corner. Yo, yo, Thank yo. You. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, we're going to introduce uh, Kenny Leon, uh, Mike Mortor, uh, serial killer of comedy. Uh, would you please introduce uh, Mr. Kenny, please? Uh, this is my good friend, Kenny Lyons. Everybody, welcome to the show, Kenny Lyons. Kenny is hey a legendary local LA comedian. Uh, he has been banned from all of the major comedy places. Really? Uh, yeah. Pretty much all of them, right, Kenny? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much all of them. Um, incredibly funny guy, okay? Uh, and we'll get into his history and why we have him on this episode of So You Think You Got Problems. You, got, you think you got problems. <laughs> you think you got problems. You think you got problems? You think you got problems. You think you got problems? You think you got problems? Right, right, right. Now, Jeff is down there eating a pussy sandwich. No, it's, it's cod with turmeric rice. You're out of your it's mind. Ugh. It's spinach wrap. Yep. Of course. The Jeff Keller is a brilliant touring comedian. He has written and toured with Paul Mooney. Um, brilliant, brilliant, dear friend of mine. Eat some of the nastiest sandwiches on our first podcast because we took an extra 35, 40 minutes trying to get this whole video thing sorted out. So motherfucker had the nerve to order some food, but he's eaten and we got him here. And and he's half black, half white. He is our mixed race participant in all of this. Uh, uh, and, and Choctaw Indian. Don't forget that. Whatever. Mike is uh, <laughs> Mike is straight with the gay haircut. And Kenny does. I like to call this my rooster look. It gets me young girls. What? They <laughs> hate their fathers and they take it out on me. That's beautiful. How, uh, how young are we talking here? And please make sure it's legal. <laughs> I, I, I fish around 35, 36. That's where I'm fishing right now. Oh, yeah, that's, that's too, too young. That's, that's too, too young. Right? That's I too wouldn't date anybody my own age. I'm not into that geriatric vajay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For those who don't know, my name is Ron Bush. I am the homosexual of this, uh, of this, of this group. Uh, you, sure, you sure are. My, my, my dating pool is 21 to 33. Smart. Right. But I've just recently deleted, I recently deleted Grinder off my phone, gentlemen. I know <gasps> have What? No! Permanently deleted, I've deleted my profile. Why? Well, first of all, this motherfucker tried to extort me. So we started- Wait, 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 hold on. I thought you can't cuss. No, you can cuss, you just can't say all the, the, all the derogatory racial statements that your motherfuckers were saying. <laughs> Y'all <Yo>, motherfuckers. He <laughs> <laughs> goes at on us. It's going on Instagram TV. You can say whatever you want. No, there's no racial epithets, okay? No. I'm not saying anything. I'm going to let you. No K word, no, just, just. Anyway, so I had to delete. Okay, so a few weeks ago, I was on Grinder, and we were exchanging dick pics and everything like that, and I was talking about how, you know, I was going to do the things that I do. And uh, so then he was like, ooh, I'm going to come over and let me get your number. Okay, so I was like, all right, so I gave him my number, okay? The next thing I know, because your phone, your cell phone was attached to your, your Facebook account, the next thing I know, he starts messaging, he starts sending me these text messages with all the contacts that I have in Facebook saying he's going to start emailing my dick pics and the conversation to everybody in Facebook. Now, Mike, you know me. Jeff, you know me. Kenny, you know me. I laughed. I was like, nigga. <laughs> First of all, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's advertisement. So, oh, dude, I get more. It's marketing for you. Oh, are you kidding me? Come on. The <laughs> shit that I was saying, the shit that I was saying, I was going to do this motherfucker. I would have been. It would have been just comedy in itself. But second of all, I told him, as you do that, I'm going to take your IP address down to the FBI so they can lock your fucking ghetto ass up. And they blocked me. They blocked me. So that was my first sign that probably Grinder is not the best place for me. And now with the pandemic, you know, do you really need pandemic dick? You know what I'm saying? No. You know, so just, no. Yeah, you got enough problems as it is, Ron, because 
You're we talked friend. about this. If you die and get AIDS, I'm keeping you in a jar and walking around the house in the street like a pet. First of all, it's my dream. It's my dream to have you in a little jar yeah. and just walk you around like a pet. And when comics piss me off, I'm going to open up and throw you on them. <laughs> that would be considered a terrorist act. Okay. It's, it's, I'm going to go by the comedy store, open you up, and just spread you all over the place. At least a third of them would love it. At least a third. Of them. <laughs> and if, if, if I, if if I catch, if Everybody. I catch full blown AIDS, I'm going, to come, I'm going to go to the comedy store and become the sprinkler of death. Everybody my wrist and my throat and spin around. Ah, Everybody that. loves BBC. Don't you get it wrong. Don't get it twisted. Jeff, when you swallow that food in your mouth, you tell me everybody loves BBC, or at least the, the black side of your dick. <laughs> Jeff's oh, dick is black on the top, white on the bottom. Let's, let's not get <laughs> twisted. Women do love the, the black part of the dick. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah, that's why I'm hopping the fence and doing crazy stuff. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, but but this isn't about me. Okay, ladies. Uh, not about me either. Listen, Mike, would you like to would you like to introduce uh, what we're going to be talking the subject for tonight about Mr. Kenny Lyon? So you think? <laughs> this is, so you think Kenny Lyon. Okay, okay, let me let me, let me do this. Stories from the this. pandemic. Here we go. All right. Uh, the topic of the night is Kenny Lyons. Kenny Lyons. And my boy Kenny picked up a transgender woman on the street who was homeless. Homeless. <laughs> homeless transgender date. You're Close mixing up. it all together. This is becoming like the never ending story. Close <laughs> up. Close up. So Kenny, Kenny, first of all, Kenny, why don't you introduce yourself to the crowd? You know, and tell <laughs> No, well, yeah, you know, if you're watching this and you know who I am, then, you know, I'd say a lot of shit that people don't want to hear or whatever the hell, but it's just whatever. Um, well, Mike was right, but he mixed up the story. So, the he's got, uh, I, I start with, what, um, well, you dating were in LA is kind of, you know, you were sexually. You gotta, you gotta have certain things, or you gotta be a certain person, or you gotta, you know. So you know, it's superficial, but that doesn't stop me from having a good time. Um, you know, you I've consider, been. What do you consider a good time? Uh, I, you know, I've been. I for a couple of years, I've been a dude who likes to do kind of like eccentric dates. I like to meet, <laughs> like kind of like. Wait, what kind of that? I like, to, I like to meet, like, women that are older than me, that uh, don't have a job, that might need to go into a mental health in institute or whatever. <laughs> but, I, but I still find, you know, the, 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 the attractiveness in them and whatnot. Um, these women... So do you perform at convalescent hospitals? No, I, I, I go to, like, Skid Row and uh, go up to <laughs> older women... <laughs> And like, ask them if they would like to um, go on a date with me. That's code word for you know, go making love in a dumpster for nine bucks or something like that. Wait, wait, you making love or having sex in a dumpster? For nine? Uh, it's it's it. They're old enough to you know they they know what they're doing, so it does feel like love. It does. Now, do you remove the garbage? These are homeless women, correct? These are older. These are older women. Uh, you know, it takes a certain kind of stomach to go through this. You know, the settings are kind of rough. They're not too luxurious. Sometimes I'm, you know, having oral sex behind a dumpster or inside of it or in a street in the middle of the night or in a construction site. It's just wherever the, the, the place is at, you know, it's a go. Every so it's time. homeless women. Yeah, it's homeless women. That That's where I started my, like, my grungy kind of, you know, sex uh, appetite. Then uh, so, so real quickly, real quickly, Kenny, just to walk to walk people who may watch this through this. What is it that you find attractive about sleeping with homeless women? I find the 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 the, the whole like the the it's not difficult to pick up a woman who doesn't have anything. <laughs> it's not difficult <laughs> at all. A woman who ha doesn't have anything or her life's ruined or her life's <laughs> just, it's, it's a shit. 
She doesn't care how I look. You know, I care how they look. I'm not going up to obese homeless women. You know, I'm going to. So, they gotta be so, you, got, like, so you have a standard with homeless women, right? Yeah. I, you got a you homeless find standard. A, yeah, they got to be able to, I could, I, I'm not going to, you know, fucking pick up someone or have so much sweat on me or anything like that. I'm not, I'm not trying to deal with that. I've, I've had, I've even like hooked up with obese women who have jobs and a car and I'd rather hook up with a woman from Skid Row who's like 110 pounds who smells like shit or whatever. I don't, I don't mind. Now, Kenny, Kenny, how old were you when you realized that was your thing? Uh, I think I was like 23 or 20, 22. How old are you now? Okay. I'm 27. <laughs> I'm about to turn 28. What, what, what happened? What happened for you to realize that? Uh, it's just, it was hard dating. You know, I do a lot of mics. I get banned from everywhere. So all the girls think I'm a rapist or something like that. And I'm not, I'm just a fucking, I'm just a crazy dude who gets naked at the mics. Cause I'm, I get, like, get, I get excited. I get excited. I, you know, I got, listen, listen, I got him naked at flappers. I bear baited him to do it. Yeah. And they want to in the little right room. Thank you, Mike, for contributing to our society. And so <laughs> Well, they didn't want to give me the pizza spot. It's like they're only giving it to the people that work there. I'm like, I, I'm, I'm driving all this way, taking the bus this long, and I'm not going to get a pizza? What the fuck? So, and I said, I, I Kenny, have, you know what you need to do? Take off your clothes and show who you are. The messed up part is that uh, that dude, there was another dude that got naked there too, That the other white guy, and he didn't get fucking a band like how I did. Racism. So it's really? All, Joey Herman, remember he was the dude right next to next to me. What he got naked there too. Dan Nolan got all these dudes got naked there. Like they all, so, you know. So so Mike, instead of helping Kenny out and you knew he was hungry, get him a piece of pizza. You told him to get get naked. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. oh my I, I I I freed him from himself. <laughs> Oh it, I mean, Burbank isn't fun. I wasn't even trying to be there in the first place. Dude, I don't the like best, Burbank. The Go best was the looks on their faces when he did it. That, <laughs> that can't be captured. It, you had to see it to believe in it. It was just complete, utter chaos meltdown. It was beautiful. So real quickly, <laughs> let's, let's give a little history because everyone in L.A. knows this, but people who may be watching this don't. Kenny was uh, sexually assaulted as a child. Um, if Kenny, if you Wait, can, can Kenny tell us this? Kenny, tell us about your childhood. Tell us about your childhood, Kenny. Let's just... So uh, I have oh, my, both of my up. parents are Guatemalan, and uh, my mom had uh, two uh, other kids with, from another, you know, relationship, but they grew up in Guatemala. I was born in America, here in Los Angeles, and uh, my mom, when she met my dad and whatever, they brought over my two older brothers here to America and I think from what I think I don't really know but I think that they were sexually assaulted as well by like my yeah. uncle or yeah. like a grandpa or whatever so they they kind of like came here and like they were supposed to be our babysitters while my mom was like working or whatever and it, it things kind of got out of control like people started like touching and licking and sticking or whatever and it, it kind of like kept going for a lot of years so I, I i was being like molested from like the age of four to like almost 15 kind of 16 my brother was even trying to like ask me hey you know are you having sex you know in middle school blah 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 and then he would ask me you know how big is your dick and so i didn't know any better and he, i would show him my dick and then he would like stroke it and then he's like i'm just trying to see how big it gets or he would like just stroke my dick and I, I just I've been ever since I've had like a sex I've been a sex addict like I've always been I, I can't pay attention in school I like I always try to get attention to try to like get you know sex from girls you know whatever whatever I was just and then he would like I, he would like give me things like he would give me a beer or he would give me uh he gave me like a cell phone from Metro PCS one time and like he gave me like he just gave me shoes or whatever but then finally i like one one day i got like i just got fed up i was like this, this is like this is degrading because like i'm just i'm like degrading and no one knows about it and i told my cousin and everyone when they when i told them they looked at me like i was crazy like everyone looked at me like i was insane 
what made you get to that point? What happened it for was, you to get to that? To point? the point where I was like, uh, I'm I'm seeing things every day like flashbacks, and it's pissing me off because everyone's laughing at me. Everyone wants me to get a job. Everyone wants me to do this. Everyone wants me to pay bills. Everyone, but no one no one cares what happened to me. Mm-hmm. And I didn't. I fi- that finally set in my brain where I was like. I have a real problem and, and no one seems to care. Like everyone wants me to get a job. No one, and I was doing comedy. Like I, I had, I graduated high school, like fucking, cause I got super lucky. Everyone thought I wasn't going to graduate. I went to Hollywood high. Everyone was like, it's been 10 years since I graduated. I graduated in 2010 and they didn't even show up to my graduation ceremony. Like my parent, I graduated in the Hollywood bowl. I walked the stage and they didn't, they weren't there but they went for my brother's graduation. They went to Hollywood High and I had to go to their graduation ceremony. So they traumatized me in a lot of ways and they don't want to take responsibility for it. Like I, I've lived in homeless shelters like when I was 17 and like when I was like 27 or 26, I was sleeping in homeless shelters and looking, hanging out with drug addicts. You know, it's just fucked up. So, uh, uh, real, real quickly, Kenny. So a couple um, years ago, um, I tried to get you into therapy, and I know you started to go to therapy, and um, you, you go to like consult groups and things like that. What's what's that look like for you right now? Well, I'm I still go to it. It's okay. whatever, but are you, uh, are, that are, are was you finding, that, are, you finding relief, are you finding relief from that, or do you feel better from that, or like what's? No, I don't. I don't feel it is this. I have a major depressive disorder. Like I have major depression. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what will help me because every time I try to like set or talk to people, they just get uncomfortable, like even at mics or whatever, but then they all like, it just all ties down, like even roast battle and all that. Like Jeff Ross, he, he like, he makes money or he lives in a fucking mansion with all these people. And I know he's not funny. Like I know or whatever, but like, yeah, like my parents, they told me I wasn't even going to make it as a comedian and my brothers they would like laugh at me like i've got molested by both brothers not just one wow. one one was like stroking me off and making me suck his dick and another one was, like would when i was like six he got over me and and came on me he j- ejaculated on me and like my parents like they no one ever really cared like they're not even my dad's children so i have this like i have this resentment and anger Cause they still go to my parents' house. Like they, I saw them for Thanksgiving. I saw them for Christmas, and then they know that I'm like getting banned from places or whatever. And like I don't want to get a job. I I live in section like I was in homeless shelters and. Uh, so but, Kenny, 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 who? So who are who are you mad at? Everyone, my whole family. I don't like them. Right. Did you feel like your mom and dad didn't protect you? They didn't. If I was a parent. Yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Kenny. So, like, it just, it's just obvious, you know? Like, it feels like I lived in a fucking torture house. Like, when I really think about it, I'm like, damn. And they, they try to, like, contact me, and they try to talk to me, and they try to tell me, go to school, go do this. And I just want to, like, slap them. There. They know they've, they've even, they kicked me out because they're like, we're we're scared that you're gonna come in here, come in here and shoot us with a gun, and I'm like, that's you guys think I'm the I don't know I, I was the the kid. You're the was, victim. Yeah. yeah. So do you do you, Kenny? Do you still talk to your parents or no? Nah, not really. No, I don't talk to anyone really. And do they do they acknowledge at least that they, they acknowledge it, but then they say get over it, and then like that, like that's why I don't talk to them. So is comedy kind of like your therapy? The comedy was, is my fucking, like, you know, when I get up there and everyone's laughing, everyone's telling me, damn, Kenny, you're funny, or the roast battle, like, every, you know, all these dudes that come here, and they they do it in New York, they do it in London, they do it in Tokyo, they do it in Mexico, they do it everywhere. Now there's, like, roast battle shows all over the world. I feel like I was a spark of something, and everyone's just throwing me to the wayside, and and it's like, Damn! It, 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 starting it all over again. It didn't tell, 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 tell them, how, tell the, tell the audience how you got how how roast battle started. Like I was 19 years old. Like I said, I was getting molested, and I'm like, I want to be a comedian because I would watch like Richard Pryor, 
And I would like watch, like, I knew, like, I'm like, damn, this dude is the fucking shit, like, or Cat Williams or any of that. I'm not the fastest. I'm not the smartest. I'm not like the longest. I'm not the tallest. I, I was like, always like, comedy is something that it was like self dep deprecation or whatever. And I'm like, if I degrade myself, then I might get a laugh or, but I was like, I'm so like in interested. I'm like, I want to find how to figure out how to do this because. I want to get the fuck out of here. And, so how did you um, get involved in roast, roast battles? So, like, I started doing open mics because I Googled it. And then I, it was, I, I used to live over, like, by Melrose and, and uh, Vine. And, and then I, there was a South Comedy Hall, Melrose. I walked over there. And I, I remember that night, dude, it was, like, a packed-ass open mic. And I was, like, 18 years old. And I was watching all these dudes do their fucking set. And I finally, it was my turn. And then I went up there and I talked about working at Subway and like making sandwiches and like going to a strip club with my Subway paycheck money or whatever. Like, I kind of like just wanted to make a silly thing. I, I wasn't like, oh, I'm going to go up there and talk about getting less. That was never, ever, ever, ever in my fucking, in my plan. Then I went, I, I was working at Subway and Rick Shapiro, he walked in there. And uh, he, um, hey Rick, Rick, well, Rick Shapiro, like he, he was like, oh boy. He, he was, yeah. he was, he was just like freaking um, doing a like this fucking accent or something as he was ordering the the sandwich. Then I said, dude, are you a comedian? Because you're funny as fuck. Like I've never <laughs> encountered anyone that's walked in here and has been this funny. Like, what are you? Are you a comedian? He's like, yeah, man. Like. You're kind of funny too. Like, well, well I, and I got his number. Then I called him and he told me, look, uh, I need a ride somewhere. Can you get me a ride? And then I'll help you like go somewhere. Dude, I called like, I called so many people. Like I was like, dude, you got to help me, bro. Like this dude, that's a comedian. He needs a ride. Like I hope I'll give you weed if you pick me up and then let's go pick up this dude or whatever. We did that. And then he invited me to the comedy store. And I didn't know that I was not allowed. I was like, oh, you know, I'm just going to walk in with him. I walked in with him and I watched this. He did the Josh Filipowski show, Paid for Pain, in the belly room. That was in 2011. And so he fucking, he did, he, he, uh, he saw me at the Hollywood Hotel and I did something. He's like, yeah, dude, I'll take you to the comedy store. So he took me. He introduced me to Josh Filipowski and he said, yo, this kid, he's funny. Like, you know, he's funny or whatever. That's all he said. And then Josh was like, do you want to do the show? And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, fuck, yeah. Here, uh, try to sell these tickets or whatever. It was a bringer show. Then I, I, I when I did the show, or whatever, like, I, I figured that, that I heard, oh, there's an open mic here on Tuesdays. If you come here in the belly room, there's an open mic. It's not a show. It's an open mic. So I went over there, and they would fucking kick me out. Because they're like, where's your ID? Or like, how old are you? Who are you? I'm like, oh, I'm 19. I'm just here for the mic. They're like, no, you can't be here. I would fucking sneak in there because back then there was no security. That shit was like fucking garbage back then, the comedy store. Hey, hey, was Kenny, like, hey Kenny, real quickly, um, we have a time limit on this. So... Just if you could just get into the situation of where the rose battle started, like how who you got into the argument with. So I was getting kicked out. I was getting kicked out, and then I was making a scene. I was like, "Yo, that's not cool. Why are you guys kicking me out?" Then I finally told Brian Moses, "I'm like, dude, don't kick me out. Let's just let me get up on stage." Then he's like, he fucking told me, "If you want to slab box him, I'll let you get up on stage." I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Okay, I'll do it. Like slab box him. He told that he tried to scare me with that shit. Now that I think about it, I'm like, he was a dick fucking dick bro like a fucking now, who'd slap box he so then I, I i was like getting infuriated i was like i'll slap box anyone i'll slap i was acting like a lunatic you know how i am so he kind of got a little like okay never mind like i won't <laughs> never mind then he's like well you guys could roast each other on stage how about that he didn't even let me do like a set he's like go up there and get made fun of like degrading me and when i went up there i made a joke i was like uh, it was Josh Martin. I was like, dude, you're so ugly. Boon Shagalaka wouldn't molest you. And everybody started <laughs> laughing. Everybody started laughing. And I won. I was the first winner. I won. And then everybody was like, oh, we now we want to do it. <laughs> like, fuck them, dude. Fuck them. 
Fuck right. them, dude. Fuck them. So, Kenny, so that kind of gives a little background, you know, of like the, your start in the comedy store. And so you, you know, for people that don't know, Kenny can be really, really funny. I've compared him to like Freddie Prince Jr. in ways, like the, just the way that he can get into things. Um, but then when did you sleep with your, to, just to keep it on to the uh, homeless thing, when did you sleep with your first homeless person and like four or five years ago so i just i just told her i was like i was right there i was like man i'm like i had five bucks in my pocket i'm like i'm gonna ask her like i could either just give it to her just being nice or i could offer it to her if i want you know some some oral sex so i was like hey you know i'll give you five bucks if you suck my dick and she's like yeah so then like this lady we walked behind the store and then she fucking sucked my dick and she was like if you give me five more bucks you could fuck me and then she pulled down her pants, and back then I was kind of like, nah, like, I don't know where the fuck you've been or whatever. But then, like, lit after a couple more times doing it over and over again, just fucking driving my bike at 3 in the morning and fucking skid row, just eventually I was like, yeah, sure, I guess I'll stick my dick in your pussy. And it was on 4th of July. I fucking stuck my dick in some lady's Section 8 building or whatever. And I caught chlamydia. I was like, fuck, man. Like, it was my first STD. Like, the fucking, my sperm turned, like, the color yellow. It was fucking weird. I had to, like, run to the fucking clinic. They, they gave me a shot or whatever. I got cured. Then you another were, time. You could have given Mike Morch for that 10 bucks and you got the same thing. Yeah. Well, see, the thing is, if you just drank my blood, you would be cured forever. You could do whatever you want. That's yeah. how I'm going to cure Ron from being gay. I'm just going to let him bite my arm. That'll be it. I, I, mean, you with you, girls in three I said weeks. this a million times. I wouldn't want to be straight. Straight guys have the worst life. I, I, you guys, so do you, Kenny, do you wear a condom now? No, I don't. I still don't. I, I, man, like, I don't. Fuck that. I hate condoms. I even, I, now I have one homeless a, a prostitute lady that I know where she lives and she lets me come pick her up. I get to bang her and come inside of her for like 10 bucks, man, with no so condom. So what happens if you get her pregnant? She can't get pregnant because she's got her tube tight. She's like fucking mentally ill. She got the operation. Now, Kenny, 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 back to the subject here. You know how much I love you, okay? Yeah. You have to know that all of this is bad, right? Like, well, I don't like, care though. I'm an adult. I'm an adult, and I'm not gonna fucking like be out here trying to change who I am, and be like, oh, I'm gonna be a fucking good guy. I know I'm a good guy, but why do I have to like fucking? Especially the way girls are today, you have no idea how the way they are. The ones that are my age, they're the worst. They're the fucking worst. And I have, I have, I have needs. I fucking want to have sex, but I don't have money. I don't have eighty dollars to pick up a girl that doesn't look like she smokes crack. So I'm gonna pick the one that smokes crack. Like <laughs> that's what's gonna happen. I'm not gonna take no for an answer. You're, you're right. On some levels, you're absolutely correct. So, so, so okay. So then, not too long ago, so you've been you've been bringing home and you have your main homeless chick. I have two homeless <laughs> ones, one that rides a bike and another one that she lives in like this fucking government housing brothel kind of thing. Okay. And you've had how many, yeah. you've had how many STDs now? Two. Okay. <laughs> Guys, and so you're, so, so you're going home one night and you yeah. have a, Male to female, transgender. No, but that was, okay, so, but like like I said, you know, girls my age are, I hooked up with girls on Tinder, you know, girls. Yeah. But then they just block me. They block me. I've had a couple times where I fucking hooked up with them. They're like, you're weird. Like, you talk about, like, you don't talk or you talk about comedy or Jeff Ross. Like, I don't oh. care what you're saying, all this shit. And I'm like, I'm just telling you what what's on my mind, you know, like. And then they're kind of like, oh, you don't know how to foreplay. Like, you kind of, like, rush into it. And it's like, what the fuck do you mean? Like, these girls, they're like, what are you going to – they text me. They're like, so what are you going to do to me? And I'm like, I'm going to stick my – what, you want me to eat your pussy? Like, they're like, no, you have no imagination. I'm like, 
these girls are stupid. Like, if you really want to hear what I'll do to you, like, you'll probably throw me in jail or some shit like that. You know, like, yeah, don't, Kenny, put, don't, don't ever yeah. do what you think. Yeah, like, the, don't ever do I, what you think, Kenny. Don't ever. And, and, and so, like, and so, uh, you know, these girls, they blocked me and I got blocked on Tinder. Like, I got, they you got banned, on I got banned on Tinder. I got banned on Tinder. I got banned on Tinder. I had to get an Obama phone to fucking get back on it. I had to get EBT <laughs> welfare to fucking get What's an Obama phone? Oh, okay, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And and I I fucking logged in or whatever. I did the I started swiping and I matched. Now when I looked at the bio, it said that it was trans. I'm like, okay, transgender. Um then uh I I was just like I texted the person I was like, do you have an any or do you have an Audi? Because I'm like, do you have a pussy or do you have a dick? I don't know right. what, what you are. <laughs> right. And they said that they had an any. So I'm like, okay, they have a pussy. So I'll go. I went over there and like, this should have been the first sign. Like when I opened the door, it smelled like gym socks. Like literally like a gym <laughs> PE. Like, I'm like, wait a minute. This dude smells like, what the fuck? Like some real hardcore BO. Like this is some... But but I was I thought okay maybe she took too much estrogen or some shit like that I'm like or too much fucking you know testosterone or whatever and uh, I walked in there and then I was looking I was looking and I was trying to like analyze what the whole situation was and I felt the chest I was like I see lumps so I'm like I'm squeezing something so then I took off the person's shirt and it looked like it was just like these two like like that it was weird it was like the nipples like they them, and then they just dropped them it was fucking weird i was like this is a weird tit job like what the fuck and um, then i just how old how old was this person it was younger than me like 24 20 23 where, or would 24. They, where would they come up with the money to get the surgery that's what blows it was a caucasian mind. transgender it was a caucasian transgender okay and uh from sacramento and uh I, I was like, I was like, I was like, okay, like, let me see what, what, what your pussy looks like or whatever. So I took off its pants and it looked like, like fucking dark meat, all fucking clamped up, like just fucking dark meat. And I was like, what is this shit? Like I started touching it and I'm like, oh my God, there's like the baby penis is there. And they left it to like kind of resemble a, a clit. And then, like, when I fucking stuck my finger in it, it was like, oh, it's, it, it was like real disgusting. It sounded like, like a glove, just fucking like, with all this nasty, <laughs> dirty oil. Just. But then, like, when I smelled it, it smelled like mold, man, like some real mold. It was, I didn't understand. Uh, but like I said, I didn't want to be a homophobe or a transphobe or a fucking. I wanted to be an ally. So, so I started lick I started licking it and I'm like, oh man, dude, this shit tastes like shit, dude. What the fuck? Dude, like I I was like, eventually I'm like, all right, you know, go ahead and suck my dick. So basically this dude with a pussy was sucking my dick and I'm like <laughs> and he couldn't even suck dick. I was like, man, dude, this just sucks. Like that's when I knew I'm not gay. I'm like, if guys suck dick like that, I don't even want this shit. Fuck that. I'd rather have like a drunk crackhead fucking open her mouth and let me fuck it, you know? Like, for real, dude. Like, that's whack head. And I was like, nah, this shit is whack. Like, get the fuck off me. Then I started banging it, and that's when I knew it was a dude because the legs were fucking like strong, like fucking strong, like, hairy ass legs. And I started slapping his ass, and then his his pussy would clench up, and I was like, "Oh god!" It would fucking <laughs> like tighten up my dick on the head. And I was like, "Ah!" It puts you in a chokehold. Like, yeah, I was just, and then I just ejaculated on him or whatever, and I just ran away. I just ran away crying. Like I just ran to my car and just ran. I was like, "Oh my god! I can't believe I did this." The fuck. That shit was disgusting, man. Was like, hey, nah, yeah. Let's back up. I, I, I just, I just want to say to the uh, audience, and you think you got problems? Yeah. <laughs> you, think you got problems? You got no problems. <laughs> so, Kenny, let's let's ask this question. Do you think that you may be? Um, uh, do you think you might be bisexual, or do you think mm -hmm. you may be? Is it just is it just a sex addiction? You know what I'm saying? You know. Yeah, I just wanted to like fuck something. I was like, cause 
it's it's expensive fucking these homeless women you know like i don't have a job i don't have i don't make that much money so if i don't have 15 bucks they're not gonna do anything they're kind of they're kind of rough too they're kind of mean if i don't show up with the money and like they don't they don't they don't hook it up with a discount. Like they're, they're they won't accept. You don't give a homeless discount. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, come on, hook it up it's with like a discount. They like, like, have nah. a sandwich. The homeless yeah. discount, so have a sandwich. Yeah, so I was like, okay, I guess I'll fuck this and figure it out if if I will like it or not. But I don't like it. It's it is like fucking a dude because it's basically a dude's body, and I'm like, this shit is so. I had to close my eyes, and I'm like. I'm like, oh my god! Like, I'm just a fucking animal. Just fucking, just. Disgusting. So, how do you make money now? I don't. I, I mean, I I don't make money. I have EBT at Welfare. I um I do teach kids Taekwondo at the parks, you know. But right now, I can't do that shit because of the virus. But Where are you living now, Kelly? I'm living in a Section Eight right here on Santa Monica and Vine in Hollywood. Hold up! You <laughs> teach Taekwondo to kids? Yeah. Yeah, I've been doing it for a long time. He's good at it, actually. Now, now what, uh, what belt are you? I'm a uh, third degree. Black belt? Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. So, so, we, we've talked about this before, Kenny. You, you tell, tell the people why you love to do it, why, why you love doing that. Because it feels like I'm living in amends, you know? Like, I, I have a purpose for because when i was a kid that was my sanctuary too you know that's where i learned how to clean that's where i learned how to all the forms that's where i learned how to like deal with other cultures or deal with other people and respectfully but you know in the real world that's not the case that's why i tell them i'm like you know the real world is different you know you guys you don't ever know if you're gonna run into a, a dude that's like 20 years old but he's like he thinks that he's a 12 year old in the mind or something, you know, uh, like no self-control or whatever. And that's, that's like, I'm like, you guys got to have self-control because otherwise life is hard. You know, there's no, there's no discipline. There's no, like you you'll be living a hard life. And I know it, I know what it's like. So right. I, I bet though, when you were training, you felt safe there. It was a safe definitely, place. Definitely. Yeah. But then my parents ran out of money and they couldn't take me back. So I have like holes in my in my training, training. Yeah. yeah, and that's where I'm. Kenny, like, the, the, if you apply what you learned from the training to your life, your life should be a lot smoother. It I is think smoother. I haven't given up. You know, I, that's the whole thing in martial arts. You don't give up, even if you're in last place. You, you know, you keep going. Right. Until, no, it's an act of attrition. Absolutely. Yeah. The problem it's, is the marathon race. Yeah. The problem is that Kenny has all these hurts that he hasn't dealt with. Right. And until you deal with those hurts, you're not gonna be able to heal. Right. So Kenny, where where are you in the healing process of that? You know I wouldn't know at all. Like I my therapist even ran bumped into me at an open mic in downtown before the quarantine. He was telling because I, I was I was doing your therapy, right? I was doing I was yeah, I I was doing I was going to Ron's therapist, Dr. K now. Right. I, I did what he said, uh, like, I didn't have a driver's license before I, I met him. Then he's like, okay, we're gonna get you your driver's license. This is gonna be part of the goal. Mm -hmm. I got my driver's license. Then he's like, all right, then you gotta go to school. I, w I went to LACC, but I had so much anxiety and so much anger from mm -hmm. like all of that. I told him, I cannot mentally handle this. Like I'm telling you right now, I'm supposed to come here yeah. and be vulnerable with you. And yeah. I'm being super vulnerable with you. And I'm telling yeah. you, that I can't do it because it's killing me. <laughs> and then he was like, no, you gotta keep going. I'm like, you're not listening to me. Yeah. I, it's it's causing me a, like a lot of pain and I don't wanna yes. live like this. I'd rather just be to myself and, and yeah. figure it out when I'm ready. And he was like, well, if you don't wanna go to school, then I can't, I can't, uh, I can't, you know, help you. And I was like cleaning his house, mopping his floor, cleaning his bathroom for 15 bucks an hour and i would show up late because i'm like i hate doing this like who the fuck shows up to fucking do this you right. know i would water his I plants think, I, I, would, think, can I think what it is i think what it is is it was trying to get you to take action to earn and you know there's there's a certain thing that happens when you work and when you take care of yourself and when you when you start going into an environment that's supposed to be safe 
that you can perform duties that you get paid for, especially considering how little you're making. I think it was try he, what, he, what he was trying to do was getting you to see that the more that you show up, there's no fear in that. You know, there's, and when you go to recovery programs, one of the sayings that they say is, keep coming back, it works it if you work it, you know? And so right. what happens is the more that you confront your fears, the more that you confront your anxieties, theoretically speaking, the more that you see that you actually can exist in that environment and it becomes less of a, pro less of a problem and more of a positive. You yeah. know, so but, but for him, but for him to exist in that environment, he has to be able to deal with his anxiety that right. comes from being molested right. as a kid. Right. So and, that, and that's he, why he smokes. Oh, so let me much finish. Weed. Right. Well, yeah, but yeah, he yeah, he's he's masking it himself. Mm -hmm. Um, but to before until he deals with what happened to him as a kid, he's not gonna be able to do those things that you're talking about, Ron. And sure, so what he does, it. It. so what he's doing is like what Mike said, he's self-medicating himself to deal with the hurt and the pain instead so, of getting the right therapist for him. Right, so, so Kenny, my, my next question is, so when do you think you'll be ready? Because it, you know, life's about choices, right? When do you think you'll be ready to start making the choice that is like, okay, I need to take control of these behaviors. I need to, um, I need to, uh, I need to take control of my earning. I need to take control of my emotional well-being so I can move forward in a more sustainable manner. I'm living my life as the artist way. Like I've get, I've devoted my life to the art, the art of like martial arts, the art of comedy, the art of improv, the art. That art is gives me uh, like this happiness, but. I don't think I'm gonna like live like a life that everyone wants me to live, like pay taxes or all that, because I don't feel like I don't, and I don't have to, because I'm an adult. You know, I'm an adult. I'm I I have my human rights to live my life as long as I'm not hurting anyone or taking from anything from anyone. Then I'm living a just life, and 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 I feel that the my path is and so far everything that I have now, like I have my little pad or whatever I have, I have my own sanctuary. I have like, I'm safe now because I kept pushing this way because I kept going this way. So I'm not just going to stop here and then like act like I'm part of society when I hate society. I don't like society because society made fun of me. Society let me down, let you down and yeah. I try to help society the way I can. And society's like, you're not good enough or you're not doing it the way we want it or you're not doing it, this is not right. And from what I know is there is no right or wrong. There is just, there is just just. There is what is and there is what isn't and everyone has a right to live the life. Like I said, I'm not hurting anyone. I'm not doing anything that disturbs the balance of karma. You know, I'm not disturbing the balance. I'm yeah. just, you know, floating in the vessel that is life. So just know this, Kenny, know this. Everything that happened to you as a kid and what society has done and your parents, your, none of that's your fault. You didn't bring none of that to yourself, okay? All those people, that's, yes, that's on them. It's not on you. They're the ones that were sick. They're the ones that are mentally sick. And so just know none of that is your fault. Right. None I, of that. I agree with that. And, and Kenny, I've told you this before. You know, you're a very talented guy and you have some pretty deep wounds and the stories are out there and all that good stuff. But eventually, you know, there's going to come a point where for, you're, you're going to want more, you know, and the, the old, that old biblical phrase, do unto others. Um, as Jeff was just saying, all of what happened to you is in the past. But the way that you teach children about Taekwondo, the way that you're friends with me and Mike and Jeff, you know, those are the ways that you can move forward in the future. But the, there's also that part of you that you, 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 you lash out and you, you want to attack people for 
the pains that you have, which is understandable, you know? But as well, if it were, like we're talking about the incident at the taco spot open mic now, I'm not even not so, even talking about that. That's a hilarious story. We'll get into that. But what I was saying is, um, what I was saying is, at some point, you know, there there needs to be you know, you need to take control of your emotions moving forward by not holding on to the past. If that makes sense. <laughs> can I but, can I chime in? There's got to be healing. Let yeah. me let me ch let me chime in for a second here, Kenny. My my childhood was similar to yours. I, I wasn't molested, but my childhood was like Anne Frank bad. It was like living in an attic. It was that bad. So out of the three of us, I probably can relate to you the best because I don't talk to my parents anymore. And if I could do any, if I give you any advice, because I'm way older than you, and I've been in rehab five times. Um, I don't want you to wind up like that because what happens is the anger when Jeff first met me was probably 30 years ago. I was probably a 10 times angrier than I am now. I can't and I had, I had to quit everything. I had to quit drinking. I had to quit doing drugs. I had to quit filthy bitches. I had to quit all of it. The hardest thing that to help you, because I, I do martial arts as well and I made my living at it. If I could help you with anything, Apply what you learned from your classes, because that's where the happiness begins. And the fact you're way better off than when I met you. You actually have a yeah. place to live now. Yeah. Where I would tell you to start is this, because I'm not going to tell you to quit your addiction. It's silly. I, I would tell you to do this. I would tell you to, for now at least, cut off, cut off your family, because they're basically cut off anyway. Try to find a therapist or a place where you feel comfortable. There's no therapy <laughs> right now because of the corona. You can't, All right, great. No, well, this is, this, is after, this is after the corona ends. It's going to end. And take tiny, 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 tiny steps. Trust me. I don't I, want I you do to go wind to up like though. me. I do go to therapy, though. I go Good. to therapy at the Good. mental health center. Yeah, I'm, glad, I'm glad that you're, I'm glad, Kenny, I'm really, really glad. Because not every, and for anybody who's watching this, you know, and I've told you this before, too, Kenny. Not every therapist is for every person. You have to find the person. It's like with Mike, you have to find the person that works for you. You know what I mean? And well, that it's just it, it, it's like it's like the therapist is supposed to be like that 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 aura that like parental energy that you didn't have like or the well no I the, think what you're saying is great like fun, you need to find somebody like that I think that's right. great what you're saying. You right. need somebody where you feel okay with. So maybe I do maybe. feel I do feel okay with my therapist. We're Good. I've had a lot of therapists. Good. I've had Ron's therapist. Yeah. I have now the government therapist. And so like I said, the government therapist, he saw me at the open mic and he was telling me, Maybe you shouldn't do open mics because you keep getting banned from all these places. I told him all this stuff. I showed him screenshots like Jeff Ross, Jimmy Kimmel asked him, Hey, who started the roast battle? And he told him a stoner and a door guy at the comedy store. He was talking about me, the stoner. And so I'm telling you, and I showed him the Playboy. They mentioned me in LA Weekly, Playboy, all these things. And like, <clears throat> I'm telling you, dude, this is like legal. Legally, I could like sue them because they're causing me distress. They know my, they know my position and, and what I am. I'm banned for doing things that everyone else is doing. And, and I'm, I'm doing, they're like, defaming my name like i have all these screenshots like that they're saying i'm this i'm not any of that shit you know like what the fuck dude you know what, ha what happens kenny um in a lot of cases i'm not going to use this use this is not speaking towards what your situation is but what happens in a lot of cases is that it's a self-perpetuating thing action creates reaction you know and we'll get into the situation that where me and you had our blow up, where there was a person who's a, uh, you know, um, boy Cody, who is a, uh, he, you know, he has severe cerebral palsy. He's strapped into a wheelchair, you know, into an electric wheelchair. And you started to, you, you came into the taco place. You started to smoke, you started to smoke weed next to a family of kids. I got you to stop by looking at you. Um, Cody and those guys get, on stage because you don't like the jokes and you think they're a hack you start heckling a guy in a wheelchair who was just up there doing his mic and before you get into your side of it because i have no judgment here that 
is you know you're 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 in, you're you're attacking another person just there to do what they wanted to do just like you just want to do what they want to do you know what I mean? so you're not you're not being fair to that person just like people aren't fair to you do you see that i think you disconnected we lost i think he lost. disconnected too it was too much for him yeah i'll tell you what though if you edit this right you got some you got some great content yeah 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 use ron cut it to to use use a piece of it because it's actually i like what we hate is right i would tell you if it was a piece of shit and then chuck it i i feel like even as a first show if you cut it down to like i think what are we at in time 43 we're minutes like, we're, like, we're like in an hour right now okay if you cut that shit down to a tight 20 you got something for the first one because I know when we have Fifi and we have uh, your other friend, it's going to be fine. Oh, hold on. Here, here's back. Uh, we got here. Are you back? Are you there? I don't see him. He's there. I see him. Hey, Kenny. Okay. Good my bad. Yeah, no, but my freaking phone had a thing, and then I just I I canceled it, and then it canceled this thing. So, so like I was saying, Kenny. So when I was when I was saying about self perpetuating situations, this is a perfect example. Like, you know, you got angry at what you were seeing. You started to attack him, and then it became this big thing. And you know, so and it, so there's there 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 may be areas that you can see where that behavior. You know, it's it's like the time that me and you were at that open mic at the top of Chapman Building, and the white boy was started talking to he was going nigger, 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 right? And then I had to choke slam his ass. You know what I mean? Because I was like, dude, what are you doing? You know, and he starts screaming it. So he he created the situation where he needed to get choke slammed. You know what I mean? And so maybe you know, there's areas where where. And everyone has their own issues. Again, I've been in therapy for 12 years. You just heard Mike, you know, in and out of rehab. You know, Jeff, you see, you see that picture behind him. He used to have a full, gorgeous head of hair. And look at that pretty little nigga right there. Now, now he looks like an old chicken. <laughs> oh, what? And oh, what? He looked like Mr. Clean gone wrong. Mr. Clean wish he looked this good. <laughs> you know, so... I don't believe in normal. I think if somebody thinks they're normal, I think they're out of their fucking mind. And I what is normal? What is normal? I've always, I've always, I've always respected you, Kenny, because of something you said earlier. You don't give up. You know what I mean? And you don't hurt. You try. You you don't try and physically hurt anybody, but you do say some things that are amazingly offensive. You know what I'm saying? And listen, I am not trying. To I'm not even trying to claim that I'm some type of pontiff. I'm a filthy, disgusting human being sometimes. We all have our issues. You know what I mean? But what happens is, at a certain point, you have to say, okay, and Mike, I think, is a perfect example. At a certain point, you have to say, you know what? I have to take control of my anger. We all have, I don't, I don't know if Jeb does, but I know me and Mike have major anger issues. You yeah, know. and see, like, Kenny, you, you, I totally understand where you're coming from, man. Like, more than probably the other two, because I come from a similar place. And if I could give you any advice, because I was you, probably, yeah, 27, 20, yeah, I was similar. I, 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 I would hate to see you wind up like me. Jeff, where you have to, like, Jeff, where you have to, it was delicious. Right, well, let me finish. Where like, you, where, like, you have to, like, catch up in your 40s to be normal. There is no normal, but do it in baby steps. Don't, yeah. don't be yourself. I'll be honest with you. And honestly, Mike, he is doing it, because I agree with you. Since, back before, since you went to go see Dr. K, and then you started finding your own therapist, and you started getting the section, you got your practice license, you're making the progress. You know what I mean? You got your own place, you know? So... You know, what I would love to see is instead of attacking people and telling people hack and stuff like that, is to is to just be a, your buddy. 
That's what I'm saying. Like, people want me to be like this little nice boy. No, 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 no. I would never tell you're you not a nice that. boy. Jenny, you're never going to be, you're never going to be a It's G- not that you get, you're taking, you're like, you're, you're, you're disregarding the whole, it's like in general, like, don't say anything, don't say anything offensive, don't offend anybody, but I'm a comedian, dude. I'm a comedian. I'm supposed to do that. That's what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to do that. I don't know how to address that one, Mike. Jeff. Well, yeah, no. Well, listen, let, let me let me help him with that. I would tell you, Kenny, because I'm offensive, as you know. That's why we're friends. I would tell you on, yeah, I would tell you on stage, do your thing, man. Be who you are. In, in w- until you get up on the stage, don't say shit to people, even if you I, can't stand them, unless they me, physically assault you, then knock them out. But like we were, we were at open mic. You guys, we've been open mic. You know, like when we're watching people that aren't funny and everyone's oh, laughing at it, we're talking shit. Of course. So that was the situation. What happened? I was a little like, I got like a little like too wow. like too loud, right? I was like, I said, this isn't funny. The guy was drooling on himself, and then he had like a translator. He's like, Ugh. and then the translator would be like. He said, why did the chicken cross the road? And then he's like, ah. And he's like, punchline. And I'm like, oh, my God. And everyone's laughing at this shit. I feel like we're all getting retarded watching this shit. So I said it. I was like, this isn't funny. And then everyone looked at me like I was the devil. Like I was Satan. And I was like, y'all know we're open micers. Like some of those dudes are from Marty's. Marty's, you know, they get drunk. They get fucked up. I don't know what happened. I guess everyone was, thought that we were at the children's hospital or something like that. And so, so can, can you, and, quickly, to, if, if you if you can allow me to share a little insight, you were in a public restaurant with family and children there, and you're screaming at a man in a wheelchair with severe cerebral. <laughs> that's funny as fuck. I'm not trying to say that's my that's what I was trying to do, but it and was so, just the the laughs were so ingenuine. Yeah. That so, it really made me say, yo, are we really laughing because we're laughing? Or are y'all laughing because everyone wants some, like, uh, dignity points or something like that? Like, not, everyone wants- It's not even dignity points. I think, I think the idea, you know, where someone with this type of a disability is getting on stage to expose himself and be vulnerable is... Is a, is a major thing in, a, in and of itself. It doesn't matter if it's funny, if you like what he's saying or not, you know, and and just let him have his moment. Just like, you know what I mean? And and he's off the stage in a few moments and then every, you know, it, it's, it's it's unnecessary. And the, as, that- as, as we don't like people to make fun of us, you know, he doesn't like being made fun of. And so that's why the owner of the restaurant was like, I got to get told me, motion for me to get you out of the building. And so then you started calling me fag and old and all this other shit, which, you know, pushes me over the edge. So now I'm about to focus. So I take you outside and you're saying this horrible stuff to me, right? And I'm supposed to be your friend, right? And you're pushing all my buttons. So now I'm about to throw you. So I, so I admittedly, you know, throw you up against the wall, and that's when Cody starts to run you over with the wheelchair. You know? And <laughs> I would have paid to watch that that shit. <laughs> it was hilarious. I mean, Kenny's like, why are you doing this to me? And I was like... <laughs> and the guy's me. like... Yeah. Listen, Cody's great. Cody, by the way, Cody's great. He's a great guy. So Cody's running into Kenny. I'm about to hit Kenny. Ken, Cody's running into Kenny's legs with his wheelchair, and he can't close his mouth. So he's like, eh! and he's like running into it, doosh, 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 running into Kenny's leg. And Kenny's like, why are you doing this to me? I can't believe why are you doing it? was like, you are just calling him names in the club. You're embarrassing this guy. He's a human being. You are hurting his feelings with what you're doing. <laughs> it wasn't intentional. It was just a fucking, like, it's like we go to the mics, man. That's the whole edge of it. That's get, what makes the it, mics the mics. I get what you're saying, but I'm explaining to you what you were doing. You were saying very hurtful things. So he start. I mean, Kenny, let's be honest, okay? Let's just, for anybody watching this, if you offend a person with severe cerebral palsy... <laughs> If they were funny, I would have been like, fuck yeah, they're funny. To the point where he 
tries to run you over with his electric wheelchair. I mean, come on. I, I, dude, man, it wasn't, it, it wasn't was like, too, it wasn't, it wasn't, it, like, he, he just, he just hasn't done, op- uh, man, like, I, I've done too many open mics. You know, yeah. I've been like, we've done like backyard open mics, garage open mics, fucking bar open mics, comedy store, improv. It just, and it gets ruthless in there, man. It gets fucking rough. Everyone's talking shit, you know, like, and, and, and I, I, I don't know, like, I, 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 yeah, like I don't know, like even Lexington. You know how Lexington is. Everyone is wild over there. I think, I think but right, but you know, I got a rule. Don't I don't talk about people that can't defend themselves. That's if how I am. If they can't defend themselves, I'm not going to talk about. Because I'm like, look, if my man's in a wheelchair, he got enough issues. Why am I going to pile on top of those? <laughs> and and so next thing you know, you're getting run over by a guy in a wheelchair who can't close his mouth and opens his phone with his nose and. I mean, come on. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, shit. So, yeah. so, so, so to juxtaposition, the guy who got on the microphone with the machete under his chair at the, at the, uh, at the, um, at the rooftop <laughs> mic, that started saying nigger, 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 right? And I, wait, 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 back up. He had a machete? <laughs> or it was like a half machete, kind of like almost there, but not there. Like, he came to the mic with a half machete. He puts it under the thing, and it's me and Kenny and Andre Mulligan and uh, Brandon Briggs and a couple other people, uh, you know, Ellie Wobb and all these guys, Anthony Hopkins. And he gets up there, he's like, nigger, 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 nigger. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Why are you saying that? Right? And he was, you don't own that word. I can say any. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, you need, first of all, you need to stop screaming at me. Okay, because you're pushing my buttons, right? You know, first of all, I'm half Jamaican. Second of all, I got anger, man, man, I'm from anger issues, and I'm a Philly nigga. You ain't gonna get up. You little white ass ain't gonna get up on this motherfucker stage. Start talking that nigga, nigga, nigga shit. Talking about you own the motherfucker word, you know, or I don't have right. You need to explain why you think this is funny. So he kept screaming at me. So I grabbed that nigga by the throat and choke slammed his fucking ass. Goddamn right. Now, was that right? No. I do. I feel bad about it. No. Fuck that dude. But my point being is he started it and it was an unnecessary provocation. You don't do, there's certain things that you just don't cross the line on. And what you did with Cody was you did cross the line. And if we could play the clip from fucking goddamn Chappelle show, that was a habitual line stepper, right? You know what I'm saying? You know, real- well, listen, like in, in defense of Kenny, and it's nothing against the handicap. My mother taught the handicap. I get it, right? Cody, you know, if Cody, and ladies and gentlemen, Mike is short, so he's handicapped. Li- listen, listen, it, and this is nothing against Cody, but if Cody, I love is, Cody, Cody's my if man. Cody is going to go into an open mic and do his shit with his interpreter, he's got to know people are going to say shit or do shit. There's going to be variables that come up in stand-up comedy that you got to deal with them. Should have, should Kenny have talked shit to him? No. Normal people, though, if they're stupid enough to open their fucking mouths, Kenny, bury them. I'm all for that shit. Audience members, real ones that like to start trouble, that's their fucking problem. And, and, and here's the thing. Cody is no victim. He gets it. He continues to do my <laughs> he, that was his. That was like his fifth or sixth open mic. And he was a new comedian, for God's sake. You know what I'm saying? He was, he was better than half these motherfuckers out here. And <laughs> just throw it out there. So that's not the issue. It's, that's not the issue. The issue, what I'm, what I'm saying is, is saying hurtful things is certain, say, saying hurtful things is unnecessary because you've been hurt. You doesn't mean that you should be able to freely hurt other people because I've been hurt. I don't get to, I don't get to, it doesn't mean I don't want to hurt other people. I don't want to cause other people that pain. Now, if somebody starts pushing my buttons, it is what it is. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't know. Just... Kenny, I, I had an incident at Flappers, right, if this can help you, and this is a different deal. I go on stage, and this crazy bitch in the front row, white chick, of course, throws her drink on my shoes, thinking I'm not going to say anything. I look down at her, and she goes, I'm in the industry. I was like, well, we know it's not porn because you're hideous to look at. And I said, the only reason I don't kick you in the throat is because you'd enjoy it. And she freaked. They give me the light. I go, I'm not getting off stage because I'm getting paid in water. That killed. 
and I <laughs> proceeded to destroy this chick for five minutes. The, the MC, black chick, did not take my side. So when I walk off, she's trying to talk shit. I'm like, listen, you're not funny. This chick should be put in a, in a chokehold, and y'all need to shut the fuck up. And I walked out. Was it bad? Yeah. But you know what? I don't give a fuck because it was unprofessional. She didn't pay me. And they were out of control. So the, you got to know when to pick your battles. I'm just telling you, as my boy, you're like one of my close friends. When handicapped people, don't fuck with them because Americans can't handle that shit. If you did that in sh shit in Europe, they probably wouldn't care. Or you did it in like Africa. But in America, people get real sensitive about, about handicap. But normal people, you're on a real stage and they're talking shit, bury them. Warn them, warn them once, and then bury them. And Kenny, the reason why I wanted to have you on this is because people need to hear your story. People need to understand that there's a cause and effect to trauma, to sexual assault, to mental abuse. There's a person behind what is happening. You see what I'm saying? Just like there's a person behind Cody, just like there's a person behind me, just like there's a person behind all of us here. And, and so when Mike, is saying, when Mike is saying, right, what Mike is saying is there, there comes a point where if someone's being rude, they get what they give, right? But ultimately, there's not, there, to hurt somebody when they're just trying to do their thing is, is hurtful and it's unnecessary because deep down, as we all know as people that we hurt too. The reason I love you, Kenny, is because I understand your pain. I've, I've had my dad burn my house down when I was 13 years old. I've, you know, I've had my share of fucked up shit go down. I've seen at least three of my friends get gunned down. I've always been killed by cartel, all types of crazy shit, right? I get it. To me, that when I see somebody that I don't like, that I attack them for what they're doing or who they are. Let them have their moment. They're going to be gone soon, and I don't have to worry about that, you know? But what's more important is that everybody understands that everybody comes from a different place and have their pain. Listen, if I was Mike, if I was three foot five like he is, okay, I would absolutely have problems with that. You would hurt my feelings, Ron, if I had one. And if I was gay like you, I would have better taste in men. Oh, here we go. <laughs> hey, hey, stop. Yeah, that guy Cody. I mean, it was just, it was just. I don't know. I just been to too many crazy open mics where everybody gets, everybody's talking shit, everybody's having fun. You know, everybody's fucking. It get, and I, that's why I love it because I love the chaos. I love everyone. I love yeah, everyone throwing see, jokes. Just, just so you know, um, those three families got up and walked out of the restaurant. They didn't pay their bill. Um, because you were screaming to Owen Garrett that he's white trash and <laughs> privilege and all that stuff. And so my point being is that that was a venue uh, that was allowing us to have comedy free. And you cost him over $120 by doing that. And was that necessary? Did, did he deserve that? You know what I mean? Yeah. He was being nice. And you cost him that money that, you know, and so that's there's a cause and effect to the behavior whether you see it immediately or not and on top of that there were children there children the children that you love children that you train that could have been traumatized by the things that you were saying as you stood up and started screaming in the middle of a restaurant fuck them kids no nah, it, was, it wasn't even it wasn't even like because i we've done that mic before I that dude it. was there. We that dude was there when we were doing all kinds of crazy shit. We would take the microphone into the street. We would freaking talk yeah. to homeless people. Yeah, I didn't think crazy. it was gonna get that that crazy. I thought right. I thought the comment was gonna get what it was like. Okay, like don't say anything. But I didn't think because when I told okay, because then I got up right. I, what I remember is that I said what I said. Then Cody got off stage. Then that white guy get on got on stage. And then I was leaving, and he said something. I said, oh, do your act. 
then that's when everything all hell broke loose. When you're like, you you said, oh no, you gotta get the fuck out of here. That's you got up, you got up, and then you walked over to me, and then you started choking me and pushing me out of the What? Of the what? So, yeah, Ron, you didn't tell us that detail. Black on brown crime. Did he choke Kenny, Kenny. You stood up in the middle of the restaurant and started screaming, "You're white." Privilege, trash, you suck. You started saying racial shit. You ain't never said that, Ron. Come you on, started, you said that you before. Started saying, you started screaming at the handicapped guy, and the owner looked at me and said, get this motherfucker out of the building. So I started Wait. to move you, and you kept screaming. So that's when I grabbed you by your collar and drug you out the building. And mm -hmm. that you started calling me old and a fag and all this other shit. And that's when I was about to knock your fucking ass out. Okay, so that's what happened. You did. You have to take responsibility for what you did. You can't just say. So I stood up and I decided to say something. <laughs> so I'm on Kenny's side. He's a victim. No, no, nigga. The <laughs> shit you were saying was so <laughs> fucked up. You had to go. Yeah, but no, I'm with you, Kenny. You're the victim. Yeah, baby. but I've I've had you at open mics and I've I've seen you. You know I've. You've done all kinds of wild shit too. You you like told strangers, "Hey, white guy, you know I'm gonna rape you tonight, or you know I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna your asshole is gonna be tight tonight, or blah blah blah." I've seen you do that. I've seen you do that as fun. Kenny, and Kenny, it, it's, it's real. You can't take things. First of all, you can't take things out of context. If I'm doing a set and I'm, I have an entire room on board, by the time I get to a point where I'm saying something like that to an audience member, it's in context. With you jumping up in the middle of an audience where there's kids that are 10 years old, not in a room full of adults, not in an open mic where people are drunk and smoking weed in the back, in a family restaurant, put it in context. <laughs> you yeah, know? you know, I, it, it, it wasn't, I wasn't being like, I wasn't saying the F word. I wasn't saying the N yes, word like did. that. I, after, yes, when you, you were did. choking me, when, when you were choking me, I was like, okay, damn, I'm getting like choked by a guy mm. that I've, I've cleaned your house. Kenny. I've watched you do your sets for like hours and hours and hours. You could have just like, you could have just, you didn't have to choke me. You could have been like, yo, Kenny, just stop, dude. You could have, you could have like, Kenny. you could have diffused it a different way. Because Kenny, it was like, wait a minute. Not I've, I've like, I've like done like try to send you money through the internet. I've like gone to you, skated to you. You know, Kenny, I, I, Kenny, I've taken you to my, you know. When you're standing in a business where there's families and kids that are starting to get abused by the horrible things that you're saying, you. But you doing more abuse isn't 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 good too. You putting more abuse out there that because I was saying things, but then you actually just got it physical. Kenny, you weren't leaving, and you were screaming in the middle of a restaurant where this man was losing money inappropriately. And Dude, but you could have talked to me in a way where you're like, Kenny, come back to your senses. Stop. <laughs> Kenny, relax. Kenny, look at me. It's wrong. I had a safe word. I'm your friend. You could have said that. Word, so you, were, you, were, you, were <laughs> you were upset with me because you were upset with me because I made a joke about you at Garage Mike because one night, you, no, what was you, did, right, hold on. you did, you did, you did, you did, you did, you did, okay, okay, you rehearsed your set back when I used to live at Mozilla's, when I used to live at Mozilla, you rehearsed your set there, and then you're like, all right, I'm gonna go do Uber, then I'll come pick you up, and then we'll go do Garage mic. I called you, I called you, and I called you, and you never picked up, then I went on Victor's Instagram, and then when I saw on his Instagram stories, you were at the Garage mic, and then I comment, I commented on Victor, I'm like, Ron was there tonight. He said he was gonna pick me up so I could go too. He said, "Oh, well, I don't know. He was here." I went the next week, and I, you know me, I just talk shit on the mic. So I got up on stage and I was like, "Last week I was supposed to be here, but Ron Bush fucking left me, bro. Like he he did his set. I had to listen to the same set that I had listened to like a hundred times again, and then he just said he was gonna do something. He didn't do it." And I'm pretty, oh, you guys like him because, you know, he hooks up with you bisexual white guys or whatever. And everyone was like, oh, someone told you and then you got upset with me. You're like saying, oh, I'm talking shit about you. Kenny, I kind of was, but Kenny, it was a joke. Kenny, it's all just Kenny. jokes, man. Kenny, listen, Kenny, I could give a fuck about that. 
you were in the middle of a restaurant that I arranged a business negotiation, uh, that I negotiated to, uh, to be able to restart the mic there. You were, ch you were screaming in a business that was chasing out this man's customers where he lost over $120. You were screaming curse words in front of children that were 10 years old. You were saying racist things to white, and to, to white people because you didn't like them. Take yeah, but then you what escalated happened? it to violence. I didn't do Kenny, that. You I didn't put my hands on you. I didn't Kenny, put my hands on anyone. I was just using my words. Kenny, I was just, it was, I was just, the it was the owner that told me to get you out of the. But he didn't say, "Hey, choke him the fuck out of here." You, you could have just like I said. You could have said. You could have been like, "Yo, Kenny, yo, I didn't it's choke gone. you. It's I didn't wrong. choke you. I, I didn't choke you. I grabbed you by your collar. Like the you choked me. You pushed me up against the wall with your hands on my neck. Well, yeah. After you started, after, after you, after you started, saying. after you started calling me fag and all that shit. Yeah, I was about to. Well, knock. yeah. You're choking me. What the fuck else am I supposed to say? Thank you, Ron. You're choking me. Yeah, Ron. Please <laughs> choke me more. Uh, like what the fuck? How am about I supposed to say? how about you stop screaming in the middle of the restaurant and leave? I was gonna leave, but then you started choking me, man. And I bought a burrito. You didn't say that. I bought food. And you, I said, wait a minute, my food is right there. You're choking me as I'm watching my food being slowly kicked out of my, you're like, you, you didn't even let me get my food. I, I let, me ask you, I let, me ask, let me ask you this, Kenny, let me ask you this. How do you, do you, are you willing to take any responsibility? I'm taking responsibility, but you take responsibility too. You're no, I, 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 yeah, I, I am. I you're told you exactly what it is. Let me tell you something, Kenny. If, if Mike or Jeff, well, if Mike or Jeff or you or anybody goes into a building, starts cursing out and screaming over children to a person in a wheelchair, I'm going to try and get you out of the building. That's how it works. But you don't act like a freaking 20-year-old, too, where you're choking someone out. No, 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 Kenny. No, 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 Kenny. When you're screaming in a building that where people are being forced to leave and the owner is, is coming to me as if I'm supposed to be security to get you out, I removed you from the building. I don't have. Well, yeah. See, that's why you're, you're like you're not seeing your your. You could have. You I do. Like, I see exactly what it is. I, but you're saying you're see, you're you're saying Kenny, that I was, what you did was Kenny, right. And it's not I was right. so I was so offended by the things that you were saying to Cody. You say way more offensive shit than me. What are you talking about? You go over there and you're like, oh, I'm gonna fucking uh, take you from your girlfriend. Blah blah blah. You say all kinds. Of, that's we're comedians. That doesn't mean it was real. That doesn't mean I'm gonna go to this cerebral palsy dude's house and be like, hey, dude, you're not funny. Quit comedy. I wasn't like that. He was at a mic. I didn't think he was funny. I said something. Everyone thought that I was an asshole when everyone there says asshole things all the fucking time. And so then I'm fucking public enemy. We're running out of time here, but I think we're going to, we're going to, we have a few more minutes. I think Kenny just, let's, let's take the, let's take the heat off of this. All I'm going to say is this. There is an element of you associating one thing with another that's called a false equivalency, okay? And I've forgiven you for this. I'm going to clearly say to anyone that's watching this, if you're doing offensive, th if you don't like my humor, you can leave. If you don't like what I'm saying on stage, you can leave. You can complain to the owner. You can complain to the manager. You can get on Twitter. You can get on fucking wherever you want and you can complain. You can go on Yelp and all of that stuff. But when you start insulting people who are handicapped and screaming racial things in a room where children are forced to leave, I do have a problem with that. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to debate you on your perception of what somebody says is wrong or right because we obviously are miles apart on that. That's not what this is. I'm not here to relitigate what happened. What I'm trying to point out is that there's an action and a reaction to everything. And if you believe that someone doing stand-up, say like a Rick Shapiro, and he's insulting someone in the crowd. He shows his dick on stage to any, what are you talking about? Dude, I wasn't, I wasn't like, you don't get it. You're like, everyone here gets to do what they want to do. But when I do it, it's wrong. I'm so not that's, 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 I'm not that's saying, how it I'm is. Not, I'm, not say, I'm not saying that what, what you're hearing, that's what you're hearing. Okay, that's not what I'm saying. What he's saying is, you can do it from the stage, but not from the audience. Yeah, because the problem with it, Ken, is this. It's not even a judgment call. It's like this. If you do it off stage, if people don't like it, they'll have you arrested. They'll go crazy. 
because club owners and restaurant owners, they're out of their minds. They start losing money. They just snap. But on stage, no, do what you want, you know, by do your thing. If but the crowd, stage, if the, yeah, you can get arrested. If the crowd is buying it, the crowd is buying it. It's that simple. You're inter at that point, you're entertaining them. But if they're not, you're not. And if right, but but we've all been on stage and did our shit. I mean, I get racial on stage as fuck. Everybody they get does. As fuck. But that's and, but that's but that's just what you do. So you're like, I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna talk to you. And and not every joke works. Nope. Not every joke works. Not every crowd likes us. Right? Nope. Not every not every not everybody who sees my set is thrilled to see my set. You know, it, it's just the way it is. You know, I'm not, I, I have no judgment with that. Word. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of when you're there just talking the most offensive shit, the most craziest shit. I love it. I love it. I love, I love it. That's why I went to your house to watch you do it an hour. That's why I like did all that's, that's the thing too, dude. Like I've had friends where they're drunk, they're swinging at me, they're throwing shit at me. Or that night that we were, we went to the train and this homeless guy tried to fight you. I got in. I got. I got in. In the middle of them, I try to stop them from attacking you. I had this perception of Ron is not going to hurt me. That's why I'm going to go like hang out with Ron. I'm going to be friends with Ron. But when you started choking me, I'm like, damn. Like all for doing comedy. This doesn't make sense. That's why I didn't even retaliate. I let you push me up against the wall. I let you hurt me. I let you because I'm like, well, this is like wow. Like I thought that he would have been like chiller. I thought he would have been like, yo, Kenny, like, I, Kenny, I, first I, of all, I, Kenny, first of all, let me, let me, let me be, a, let me say, uh, if I apologize, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say this right now. The stuff, you, the stuff you were saying was so incredibly offensive. You pushed every single button that you could have possibly pushed with me. Exactly. I've hanged out with you so much that I knew, okay, I'm going to go anti Ron. I'm gonna say everything that Ron doesn't like. I'm gonna say everything that Ron hates. Let me let me tell you something. Let me let me tell you something. Right let me now. tell you let me tell you something, Kenny. Let me tell you something, Kenny. I hang out with Mike Moratoy right here a lot. I love Mike. Okay. The last thing I'm going to do <laughs> push his buttons to the point that he snaps. You play with the bowl, you get the horns. Don't be stupid. I'm not going to go up to Mike and smack him in the face and say, you little piece of fucking shit. I wasn't smacking you. I wasn't smacking I'm just saying, you, I'm using that as an, I'm I using wasn't that as an example. You. I'm I was not offending you. Kenny, it was just, I said a thing, and then everything, Kenny, it, it, got, using, it got crazy or whatever. I'm using that but as like an example. Like I said, I've, I've hanged out with Jam. I've hanged out with Mozilla. I've hanged out with Rick Shapiro. They scream at me. They shout at me. But I will never put my hands on anyone Kenny, because my that's, point that's, being, we're comedians. My point, we're my supposed point, to be the art of, of my point laughter. being is uh, my point being is I'm not going to say things so horrible and offensive that would push Mike to the point that he I where I know he's going to lose his shit. That is insanity. It wasn't towards you, dude. It wasn't. It, I said it towards Cody because. I, Kenny, I was like, again, you're not was, listening to you're not listening to what I'm saying. I am listening to what you're you were, saying. You were saying every, you were everything you were doing. After you were choking me, I wasn't coming in there and say, "Hey, Ron, N word, hey, F word, Ron." I didn't come Kenny, in there like that. Kenny, I came in there buying the food. You're buying dancing around the point. You're dancing around the point. When you, if you, if if I'm your friend, okay, if I'm hanging out with Jeff, right? If I'm hanging out with Jeff, and Shit starts going down, and I can visibly see him starting to get angry. I see him get angrier and angrier and angrier. I'm going to continue to do that because you don't. Yeah, but you're angry about other things that, and, and it's not I'm about me. Like the whole, figured... I'm always angry. Yeah, I'm like you and have you have so anger why would issues. You push those, and... So why would you push those buttons? But it, but dude, like it, I have anger issues too. I'm never going to take it out on you. I don't take Kenny, it out on anyone. Kenny, I don't understand. Kenny, you're saying every, you're saying go to therapy. You're saying go to therapy. I've been, in therapy, go to I've been therapy. in therapy for 12 years. I'm, and so I'm telling you now, and Mike and Jeff can understand this. There's what you, I don't cross certain lines ever. You don't know me good enough to know what, what I'm capable of, Kenny. You just don't. You just know me for some dude that's been hitting open mics in LA. I've had a very rough childhood. I don't. 
I will, you've never seen me snap. You don't know what that looks like. Okay. You don't, I, I've never seen Mike Moritor snap. I don't want to see what that looks like. You don't, you don't, you I'm don't, not, I'm not, I, dude, we're comedians. I'm, dude. I'm throwing it, it has nothing to do with comedians now. I have nothing, it's nothing to do with comedians. Well, it's, then, you know, see, that's, that's, that's like that, you know, like you guys are saying, get healed, then you could be a successful comedian. Well, you have that issue too, then. Like, if you're, if, that's if why, you are, that's why I go to therapy. That's why I go to therapy. That's why I do all the things I do. And again, what I'm saying is, especially with my friends, if I know things about my friends, if I say them would enrage them, I'm not going to say those things when they're angry because I care about them and I'm not here to hurt them. I make mistakes. I vouch for them. I will apologize. I'll be the first one to apologize. I have no problem with that. But there's also a reason behind it. Passion. I don't want, I don't want to make my friends angry. I won't, I don't want to offend other people because I've been shit on in my life. I don't want to be shit on, I don't want to shit on other people. There's a line. It has nothing to do with comedy. It comes down to friendship and personal respect. I respect Mike. I respect Mike. The, I respect the fuck out of Mike. Why would I want to hurt his feelings? I would tell you, Kenny, just be careful what you say to people off stage because if you meet a maniac with a gun or a knife, it might work against you. I have. You guys don't even know. Like, I've had people pull guns and knives on me. I'm not a, a violent dude. And yeah, then I, just saying, dude, you just, you I think what, I think what Mike is saying is you haven't run into the right one yet. I yeah, have. you just what are you what, I would tell you not to do it just on that note. Not yeah. not all the other stuff. Mm. Just be careful. Because yeah. people are crazy. There's some motherfuckers out there. You you sent a message to a, to one of my cousins in Philadelphia um, about me being a fag who See, there you go. I have no, I did not do any, like how you're saying this whole grinder guy is. is no, 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 dude. I have a cousin of mine on Facebook that called me up, sending me screenshots of stuff that you sent to him days after this. And he was right. He's, he makes Jeff Carasales look like a fucking goddamn Mr. Rogers. Okay. You have to show me these screenshots because I don't have any, I didn't, dude. You have a, you had some type of second. The reason why I blocked you is because you have some type of second profile where you were. Wait a minute. Okay. No. 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 Okay. You're saying second cousin, but that was you. No, that no, was you. No, no. You're trying to. I know that was you, dude, because I know you, dude. I know you. No, 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 I know no, how sir. you type. That was it, not. It was. A, it was. A, it was like. It was like one of those accounts where it's like it. It says it's someone, but it has photos of like someone from the internet. I know. Like my second cousin Clifford in Philadelphia. Yeah, dude, but I didn't add them. I didn't add, they added me. They came onto me on my thing, on my thread. I didn't, I didn't okay. go, see, that's what you're okay. saying. You made it sound like I went over to them. I, I was making posts however, on Facebook, talking however, to them, however then however went it into happened, the thread. The stuff you were saying, the stuff you were saying to my cousin was so off the wall, and he did not like it. Let's put it that way. And he immediately called me, and it's the equivalent of again fucking with a guy like Mike Mortor. You're just dealing with the wrong person, just the wrong person, the very wrong person. Dude, I didn't go over to anyone's page and say, "Hey, your family member is like blah blah blah." I don't blah, know blah. how it happened. I don't know. How I it posted happened. on my own thing on my I page know how it happened. on my thing. If and you maybe maybe you, tagged, maybe you tagged my name in it and he saw it, but the shit that was the shit he screenshotted to me that you were saying to him, that's why I blocked you, bro. I didn't even I didn't even call you back. Block, block, block. You stopped call, you stopped you blocked me after the whole garage mic thing. It was, that's it when was, you fucking blocked me, man. It was I I waited a couple days, but then it was just like it was Look, this is the thing, man. I was super duper cool with you. I was super nice with you. And then you fucking assaulted me. And I'm like, this is why that's fucked up. I fucking, like I said, I cleaned your house. You've never cleaned my house. You, you never thrown my you. trash. I paid you to do it. You needed money. You wanted to work. I paid you to do it. Take responsibility. Tell the truth. Yeah, but it wasn't like so you a, lot, a lot so of you worked, So you worked, you made man. money. 
you worked, you made money, you did your job. Done. You didn't, you didn't just walk into my house and I say, clean my house. You worked, you needed money, you did something, you earned money. That's what that was. Yeah, but, and I went, I went to go pick up like your flyers. Don't make it seem like you're coming. Like you're coming remember, remember when you said, hey, can you go pick up my flyers? I, I've done, dude, like you've asked things of me. I've done them for you. Hey, Kenny, do you I've do, been there for Kenny, you. Do, I've co-hosted hey, mice for you. Kenny, do you see, like, do you what the fuck, look, dude? Kenny, do, you see, do you see Jess look like? This, this, look, at, this is what Kenny is saying. Kenny is saying he's done all these things for you. He felt like you were friends. He felt like he could be safe around you. And you violated that, took him back to his childhood when you put your hands on him. Is that right, what you're saying, I Kenny? I get it. Yeah, exactly. I get it. And what I'm saying is we all now know the reasons around it. And I've apologized for that. But I'm not going to sit up and say, and, and but but you but I'm also not going to sit the the I have my own abuses and I have my own buttons and the things that you were saying were so horrifically horrible. Okay. That you got me there. Dude, but your, your jokes are all about ma my jokes have nothing male to do with sex. Them. My, my, my jokes, they're not, my jokes are not about that. They dude, you have a joke where you have like bits where you're talking about hooking up with dudes. It it traumatizes me too, but it, I'm like, well, you know, look at it, fucking, look at everyone fucking laughing. It trauma, your jokes traumatize me. The, the shit that you talk, the shit, the way you go up and you're like, I'm gonna be like the Lord of the Rings, yeah! and all this shit. Like you do all this shit, you say all this shit, and I hang out with you. I'm like, man, you know, like this dude is funny as fuck. And even though he says all kinds of shit that, that traumatizes me too, dude, I'm just not, I'm not in this for being like the, the morality dude. I'm not in here to fucking be the, Hey, I'm the captain or whatever the fuck. I'm just here to have fun, talk shit, right. get laughs. My point being the point, the only point that I'm going to make with this Kenny, and we're going to have to wrap this up because it's literally 10 o'clock. We have like an hour and a half of this going on here. All right. Is, I don't get on stage to offend anybody. <laughs> Come on, dude. Come on, dude. Don't say that. I don't. I'm not saying. Let me finish. I'm not saying. Let me finish. I'm not saying it hasn't happened. I'm not saying that I'm perfect. I'm not saying my jokes work or don't work. What I'm saying is that when I get on stage, I'm getting on stage to say something because there's a point behind my joke. The reason why I'm a successful comedian is because there's a point behind my joke. There's a reason why I'm saying those things. And I get my, and when, it, when I'm able to do my set, I hopefully am able to bring the crowd along. So by the time I get to those places, they're understanding the cartoon that I'm painting in their mind. And I'm never going to purposely loudly scream in a building. I'm not going to purposely loudly holler at people or heckle people. That's just not who I am. And I'm definitely not going to say things that are meant to push my friend's buttons to the point that they're so angry with me that, they're, that we're, I'm going to have some type of altercation. And you may or may not accept that. That's fine. Well, but dude, you, you, have a, you have a joke of me where you're talking about the girl who parks her car in your driveway and then every time I was there at the jokes, you would always point out to me, I'm not Kenny Lyon. I'm not telling the girls, you do me being, you fucking me. Like, and you do hey, like, that's, I, that's, dude, that's, that's it. It's like, this is the thing. This is the thing. Let me, this, this is another thing. I just don't have enough boundaries with everyone. The whole, like, I kind of let people kind of like make jokes to me and I take it and I absorb it and I, and, and whatever. And then when I do it, people have boundaries. So it's like, <laughs> it, it's like, Again, Kenny, you're 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 using a false equivalent. If I'm improving, if I'm teasing Mike, or if I'm teasing Jeff, or I'm teasing you while I'm going through my set, it's not. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> well, listen, listen, <laughs> exactly, Kenny, Kenny. exactly because you're playing a game of where it's not nothing is serious. Comedy is not supposed to be serious. It's not supposed to be serious. And there's no like rules to it. Like there's like Lenny Bruce, Richard Pryor, all of these dudes that fucking say everyone that everyone idolizes. And then when a guy does it that he's a nobody, suddenly it's wrong. And that's no, why I, that's 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 not that's, that's not, not true. true. 
That's not true. Because I'm, I'm telling you right now, comedy is to uh, make people think, make people laugh, maybe make your case to have people change their minds and how they think of stuff. So comedy can be serious. I mean, that's why you have, you said, who's the first one? You said Lenny Bruce. Lenny Bruce did stuff to make talk about race and make people think. Now, there's people that are just going to be rude to be funny. That's one thing. But Lenny Bruce, Richard Pryor were not those guys. They did jokes to make people think and, and to become sociologists to point out what's going on in the country at that time. So you cannot compare yourself to those people. They push boundaries about social content and race, which is totally different than just talking shit to be funny, to, to be out there. So you got to really, real, you got to really look at comedy and understand the people you just got them talking about, then you really need to study their comedy and see what they were actually doing. And when, and not to compare myself to any of those greats, but my intention when I'm on stage is to get straight white people who have toxic masculinity, internalized homophobia and racism in their system to be able to see that there's a different type of person out there that fits into the demographic that they've seen before. And I challenge them to see orientation, masculinity, and social consciousness in a different way. That's why I do that. I don't just get up on stage and the first thing out of my mouth is, oh, you getting fucked in the ass. And, oh, you, that's not what happens. <laughs> Even though it has. Kenny, 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 let me interject. What, what I would tell you, because I love you and all this stuff doesn't help you. The, um, I would tell you to keep going therapy so you don't have to bang homeless women anymore because you can do better than that. That would be my advice to you out of love as a friend. Because you can do better. You're a good person. You're a good dude. Right. You can you can upgrade. And I get I get your pain with young bitches because they're out of their fucking minds. And yes, they, they we live in a society where if you abuse a chick, you get laid. If you're nice, you don't. I'm not telling you what to do. I would tell you for yourself because you're terrific. And if you want to take your comedy to that next level, keep doing your martial arts and keep working on yourself to transcend the situation that you're in now. That would be my advice to you as a friend. All this other stuff doesn't mean anything. It, it's, it's getting away from what we were trying to do, but you can definitely do better than a transgender homeless person. Know that. Right. And, and, and Kenny, what I, would, what I would say, and then Jeff, I'll let you, let you close it up. What I would say is don't, what I, one, of the, one of the hardest things for me to learn how to do is not to compare myself to other people. The world is not fair. It's just the way it is. Racism exists. Homophobia exists. Sexism exists. And just because I see somebody else getting off better than I would have liked to get off, or that something didn't happen to me that should have happened to somebody else, I can't hold on to that or look at that as, oh, well, you did this and I did that. It's not comparable. It's just, it is what it is and just take responsibility. All I can do is try my best to take responsibility for my own actions and the things that I say. And I would say the same thing for you. Just try and take a little bit more responsibility for the things that you do and say and the reactions that you're getting, they're all related. You know, Jeff? Yeah, I just, I just think that it all comes back to your childhood. And the more that you become comfortable about what happened to you, the more, the better you'll get as an individual person. Believe me, we've all been molested. We've all had jacked up childhoods. Dude, I used to be one of the most angriest comedians when I first started. I was, a, I was an asshole. People won't book me because they go, why are you so angry? But as I got better you know, with myself and dealing with when I was a kid, that's why I talk about my family a lot on stage because that's what helps me get through that pain and that hurt. And as you start healing yourself, you will see things differently. Right. You won't have expectations. And I think that's why, say what you say, because you have expectations about people and situations. And when they don't meet your expectations, that's when you lash out. And you right. have to le learn not to do that. I, I agree with you, Jeff. And, and, and one thing that you know, I've learned through my life is um, everyone is going to let you down at some point because we're human. My brother, my father, Everyone in my family, every friend I've ever had, they let me down in some way, shape, or form because we're human. 
and we make mistakes. And you, and so it's caring, loving, gentle. Try and show the same compassion to people that you would want for yourself. You know, look at Mike over there, all cute and fluffy with his little little pair haircut. That's how you're supposed to gently stroke him on the back of his head and say, "Come on, baby, come back to bed." You know what I'm saying? That's how it's done. Steve, that's what grandma see, said Rod, to grandpa, right? Here. Yeah, Rod, you hate yourself. If you want to mess with this, you really hate yourself. I don't want no part of it. <laughs> I don't blame you, man. I don't want no part of it. But no, but seriously, the most important, you know, it's Kenny, you know, listen, you, you, you're like a little brother to me. I mean, um, Moratori saw me at a uh, Springbok, dude. I didn't think I was going to fucking get. I was over. I didn't even write what I did, and then that guy, uh, Billy Batch, the other dude, um, the Andy? heavy, the, the Sandy, Sandy, uh, Hortz, Holzer. right? Holzer. He was like, "You're you're a comics comic," and like, I, I mean, dude, I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't think I was good enough. I wouldn't. Be, like, I'm not. I, I'm, not I'm not. You're like, hilarious. I'm not going. I'm not like going to like do. Uh, basketball or football or whatever like I'm like okay if I but like I said you know like I'm just that Springbok set I was in like and my therapist saw my set his friends were laughing he had like fucking friends with careers with salaries with jobs and they were <laughs> laughing Kenny, and, Kenny I've told you a million times you're fucking hilarious yeah so like I'm I'm just I, there's no debate I'm not you all I, think I'm, so no, he, you're hilarious. I we all you. think so. We all think you're yeah. fucking funny. Yeah. I think you're hilarious. Yeah, so, like, I, I know that, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to have to, like, go through this struggle or whatever, but the whatever, I might, not, I might bomb, I might not. I don't know. Like, no one cares. Just, That's my point. That's I'm my going point, for Kenny. Rush. That's my point, Kenny. We all bomb. We all have bad sets. We all are off note. I remember when, when Mortor, I call it my Waterloo, when Moritor took, took, Moritor took me out to uh, San Pit, this, 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 uh, this, uh, this, this fucking art gallery in San he Pit. He bombed, Kenny. It was bad. Oh, it was, it was like the Hindenburg. It was like the Hindenburg. I've never bombed so bad in my life. I've never they, bombed so bad in my they life. They hated him. Oh, oh, old white people, they couldn't. They, it was game over from the moment I took the stage. My point being... Everyone says and does things. I, you know, um, I'm writing this op-ed right now, you know, and everyone says and does things, you know, if I, I would hate to have everything I've said and done that's horrible to be public. I've said some horrible, horrible things and I've done horrible, horrible things. It's just, it's just life. We all have. Look at Jeff over there. He's completely innocent. He's the only one who's never said anything horrible or ever hurt anybody's problem or hurt anybody feel. <laughs> you know? He's the only one. He's the only one, you know? I'm, I, I'm the first to admit, you know, I'm, I'm, I battled addictions, sex addiction, drug addiction. Come on. I, I get it. I get it. I have no judgment. Ron makes you look like a virgin, Kenny. Yeah, uh, that's why. I, that's why I liked hanging out with him because I'm like, I'm hearing him like, yeah, man, I had sex with all these random dudes, blah blah blah, and I'm like, what the fuck? This dude's like just fucking everything, everyone, all these open micers. Like I would, I, I would. I, I've yeah. only fucked three. Ah! I've he only fucked three open micers. Yeah, right, dude. They I'm fucking, serious. They fucking. Uh, not to mention the ones that just wanted to do mics, and then they heard his set, and they're like, "Oh, can I come over to your house?" And they're over at his house. Who? What? What? Wait, wait, you know? wait, wait. I don't wait, know. What? What I've never, mics did you? I fucked. I fucked three. Com I fucked three comedians. <laughs> really? <laughs> only three. Only three. <laughs> only three. Three yeah, open micers. You banged them. Hey, hey, Kitty. Kitty. Name names. Oh Come man, on, they're Kenny, not doing it anymore. They're you, not you, like they don't know. They just know there aren't. The one of them doesn't live here. <laughs> Come on, name some names. Kenny, name names. Oh man, they're just the white guys. They're like the guys that were that. that I, the I'm here to tell, guys. I'm here to, I'm here to tell so you. I'm, I'm a major. I've, I'll, let me let me help you out here, Kenny. Um, there's only been three. One of them doesn't live here anymore. Um, Who is it? I'm not. I, I don't. I don't. <laughs> 
I don't kiss until I want to know now. I don't kiss until number one. I don't kiss until number two. <laughs> number two is I don't like to shit where I eat, and I would. And the reason why I, <laughs> the one of the main reasons why I don't like to, to fuck around with comedians is because of shit like this. Ah uh, man, but you're like everyone. Oh you know, my guys! All the guys, all the boy toys that I meet are on grinder. <laughs> My QC. I want to know what comics you bag. You open this door. Let I would never. Know. I would never. I would never. I would never. I would never say. Kenny, if you know make accusations, we need proof. Man, he doesn't. Proof. He doesn't he, all he's again. All he did. Kenny doesn't. I. I know for a fact the three that I. I he, there is nothing. You know what I'm saying? I, I have no problem telling you about my sexual. You, as we all know, I have did no you, problem did, talking about my sexual. Did you turn them from straight to gay? Did you do your voodoo that you do? I don't turn anybody. You <laughs> voodoo that you do. I don't turn anybody. You creep. <laughs> I, don't turn, I, don't turn, I don't turn anybody. They come up turn. to him and they're like, I love your set. And he's just talking to him. Mike, you've seen it. Flirt with him. It's Mike, you've seen it. Now, right there. No, hold seen. on. Mike, you've seen it in action. I have seen it. No, <laughs> it, dude, dude, it's creepy as fuck. It's creepy as fuck. Yeah, dude. It's dude, so dude, funny, dude, dude, dude. Like, he's okay. like a black pimp. <laughs> dude. Ron, remember when Any I first kind of pimp? <laughs> I don't Ron, know. Remember like the football Mike, Mike, you, Mike, you know one of the guys I fooled around with because we were at we met him at the uh, uh um Mel's Diner. You remember when it, when we were at Mel's Diner and the, those two white guys Yes uh, you know one of them. Yes yeah. this is the, no white dude, here. the white dude, the white homeless no dude, you turned that shit out. No, I no, I've never played done him like homeless. an accordion. No, he wasn't he did, did, uh not gonna mention not homeless, lives in the valley. <laughs> you, I remember him, Ron. According to what? I never, <laughs> I've never, I've only, go ahead. Remember the football player? Remember yeah. who we yeah. did the gig? And I went to the bathroom and I came out and you're nose to nose with the football player who had a girlfriend <laughs> and was all over your shit. It was the creepiest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. And so, that's, and so me and Kenny, me and Kenny have hung out so much. He's just seen so much of that. Yeah. <laughs> I get what he's saying. I'm not, I'm not like, but it's, but that's what I'm saying. Kenny's a fault. You know, it's like, dude, I, I, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not telling these people, you know, you know, like, like, like when we were at, when we were at Mike, Mike Mortor, when we were at, uh, um, at Mel's diner, I was doing my set. The next thing you know, his little pussy, his little his little panties is getting all wet. And he's like, "Did you know that I'm bisexual too?" And I was like, "Oh, I watched that whole thing go down. It was creepy as hell." Really? Oh, it was really? creepy <laughs> as hell. You know, yeah. and so, so those I'm things not... happen. <laughs> but, but again, uh, excuse me, excuse me, Jeff. Number one, you are flashing logos of soon-to-be defunct sports leagues on a public thing without sponsorship dollars. Hey, that's I'm an NFL alumni. I can do that. <laughs> We're hey, supposed to be and, epi and evidently, that. Ron. Hey, Ron, evidently, you was trying to fuck an NFL alumni. <laughs> oh shit! He was not. <laughs> yeah, dude. You was trying to get them them NFL dollars. <laughs> he was not professional. He was not professional. He was maybe 25 years old, and he was the bartender. And oh, yeah. he was he was fascinated with your creepy blackness. He was hot. That boy was hot. So and what happened? Did you get the digits? What happened? I got the digits, and then he got scared when he knew he was about to get poked. You know what I mean? <laughs> he did get scared. He vanished. He creep. He got creeped out. You creeped yeah. him out. I didn't creep him out. He is. He was. He was afraid of the D. That's all it was. He was afraid, he was afraid of, of the darkness. By, by now, he's out of the closet and he's getting banged. <laughs> he, he's afraid of the darkness. What? Yeah, dude, but guys are coming out of the closet. They don't know what they're doing, and they're afraid, and so they start acting out. And it's it's half conscious, it's half subconscious. They start acting out. They start doing things, and then once they realize what's about to happen, they're like, you know, no, 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 and you know, or whatever. It's it is what it is. I get it. I you know? understand. Yeah. You know what I'm I know saying? some white women like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, you know, people aren't comfortable with their sexual orientation and the moment that it's about to become something, they, they don't want to, they're, they're afraid to do it because of what it means to them, you know? And so that's fine, but that's part of why I do what I do in my act. And <laughs> well, that, you know, they, they used to fucking over black people, not getting fucked by black people. Right. <laughs> right. 
and, and society in general is not used to having somebody who's a masculine alpha male gay dude. That's just the, the gay Thanos. <laughs> you're like uh, Ron. You're like a black gay Moses. Instead of parting the Red Sea, you part assholes. You're a disgusting. Oh, <laughs> All right, well, let's part this uh, conversation. How about all right. That? Um, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, you have been watching the inaugural uh, <laughs> telecast. Of, yeah, we got a lot of drama, y'all. So we you think you got a problem? Drama. Yeah. That's such good drama. We got. We got to do the. We got to do the tagline. So you think you got problems? You think you got? You so you, 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 you got problems? You think you got problems? You think you got problems? First of all, we would like to. I would like to uh, thank uh, Mr. Kenny Lyon. What up, y'all? Thank you, guys. I really enjoyed this, man. Hell yeah. For coming on and uh, awesome, sharing, sharing your stories uh, and you guys. your experiences. Uh, it takes a lot of courage. Uh, to yeah, it does. And um, we always, um, all to speak for all three of these guys, and I'll let them close it out, we love you. We always want to see you do well. I want to see you be successful. I want you to be able to take care of yourself and all those things, and I wish you all the best. Um, and I'm going to leave, I'm gonna turn it over to, uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Jeff and, uh, and uh, Midget Demon back there, uh, Mr. Mike Mortor, to, to take this out. Yeah, yeah, Kenny, man, I wish you the best, man, I really do. Good luck in your journey, and uh, don't sweat the small stuff. And again, dude, none of that was your fault. And uh, just move forward, man, and, and work on uh, developing your craft. That's right. one thing I should tell you to do is work on getting better study. Study people that you like, study people that you feel like you're like, and just get better and better and better. Thank you, sir. Mike Mortor, you get the last word. Kenny, uh, what I would tell you to do is leave homeless transgender women alone. <laughs> Keep all of it on stage and just keep working on yourself and you'll be fine. Yep, I agree. Kenny, any words? Ah, uh, man, you know, this, this, thank you very much for all this, man. And uh, I want to thank Ron, especially because he's the reason why I started to do the therapy and, and eventually it led me here where I'm at now. And like I said, I have like this, you know, it's a, it fuck, like, I've, I feel like I came out of a rubble or some shit like that sometimes, but it, it, it's working out. So thank you guys so much for real. Thank you, brother. No problem, buddy. We love you, brother. All right. And uh, we'll be seeing you at open mics once we're allowed to start going to open mics again. <laughs> this is So You Think You've Got Problems, Tales from the Pandemic. <laughs> Mike Mortor, <laughs> Jeff Keller, Kenny Lyon, Ron. Yeah. You guys have a great night.